Let's eliminate the gas tax. Let's take the money from foreign aid and let's give it back to the American people who worked hard to earn it. That would help people. That would lower the price of gasoline and that would be a stimulus to the economy. So what I'm saying is let's have a gas tax holiday. That was Senator Rand Paul on the Senate floor calling for an end to the federal gasoline tax. It now sits at 18.4 cents a gallon and it pays for road maintenance and new highways. And of course, there's a state tax on top of that. California has the highest in the nation, 47 cents a gallon. Alaska at the lowest at 8 cents a gallon. Should we dump that federal tax? That is the street poll. You can go vote. Sots.cnbc.com. Meantime, we're going to debate that very topic. Tyson Slocum is the director for Public Citizen Energy Program. Jerry Taylor is a senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Gentlemen, it is great to have you with us. Yeah, great um, to be here. I'm going to start off with you, Tyson. Uh, we repeal the tax. How will we pay for maintenance of roads, et cetera? Won't taxes go up in some other form? That's right. The money would have to come from general revenue because you can get rid of the gas tax, but you're not going to get rid of all of the huge transportation infrastructure needs that this country requires in order to maintain the levels of commerce that, that, that we have. Uh, we also have to heavily invest in mass transit. You've got a lot of families out there struggling with $4 for a gallon of gas. We've got to help uh, give them more tools to give them access to alternatives. Families are really struggling to get access to that. So for those a radical few who say let's repeal a very small 18.4 cent a gallon federal gasoline tax. Uh, I say how are we going to pay for needed services that not only individuals need but also large businesses and small businesses across the country. Jerry obviously 18.4 cents a gallon doesn't seem like much but to a lot of working Americans this does add up to be a lot over the course of a week or a month. Uh, at the same time how do we close that spending gap if we don't have that tax won't the taxes go up in some other way in order to pay for some of these other infrastructure issues. It may or it may not. It depends where you live. The best policy would be to eliminate this tax in total and then put all these uh, transportation expenditure requirements back on state and local governments. Tyson makes a very good argument inadvertently about why we should do exactly that. The gasoline tax is a, is a source for a large slush fund that Congress gets to play with. You think you're paying for the roads in your neighborhood when you're paying for that gasoline tax. You are not. You're paying for a bridge to nowhere in Alaska. You're paying to overpave West, overpave West Virginia because there's a lot of appropriators there who steal your tax money. It goes towards mass transit, which you may not be using. It's a giant means of cross-subsidizing some consumers at the expense of others. The right, the right policy here ought to be if you use the roads, you pay for the roads, and the gasoline tax ought to be related to the costs you impose on society, which means having that tax being levied by state or local officials and having that dollar being spent by state or local officials for the roads that you're paying for. But actually, Americans get off much more lightly, don't they, than everybody else. I've just calculated that in the UK, this weekend, the cost of a gallon of gas was $8.28 because there is so much tax that's levied there. And this is how politicians raise tax. This is one of the things that they do to balance the budget and to not have huge fiscal deficits. Oh, absolutely. The point here is that when people face a higher gasoline price, what they usually do is just grit their teeth and pay it. it does, there's not a lot of consumer response. We've, uh, and we see that in Europe. So for all those who say, oh, we need high gasoline taxes to induce a shift away from internal combustion engines and towards renewable energy well where are all the where are all the alternative fuel vehicles in Europe you're paying eight dollars per gallon effectively in US but are there a, is there a plethora of battery powered uh, cars in Europe no is ethanol competitive in Europe no not even with those taxes uh, mm. do we have compressed natural gas uh, systems that can move our car no the fact is is that you know it's just a raise a way of raising a lot of money for politicians which is a very good reason to get rid of that tax it, 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 it sounds right Tyson uh, no, absolutely not. I mean, the fact is that most of the federal gasoline tax is simply handed to states in the form of a block grant where the states are free to determine how that money is spent. Uh, and states shouldn't be in charge of, of uh, collecting all of this uh, money. We have to do it on the federal level, but we've got to reform the current gasoline tax. It's currently a flat rate that doesn't uh, correspond with the current market price of gasoline, which is around four bucks a gallon. I think transitioning to something that more accurately reflects 
a user's impact on infrastructure, like a, a vehicle miles driven tax, where in each automobile you'd have a, a transponder like you have with uh, uh, motorists who are familiar with easy pass tolls in certain parts of uh, the United States, that would be a much fairer disbursement of, uh, of uh, the uh, tax burden. Okay. But there's no question that we've got huge infrastructure needs and repealing the gas taxes is, is irresponsible. Tyson, Jerry, uh, good to speak with you. Thank you.